Welcome to Watch Therefore, or Watching for Our King, Messiah, Great Savior, our Lord Jesus. He told his people, are you one of his people? He said, watch therefore and be ready. You don't know the hour or the day of the coming of the Son of Man. He's coming in the clouds for his people in what is called the rapture. And the signs are all around us, leaping off the pages of the Bible, that it's any time. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee, watching for my King, and I pray you're doing the same. Let's have a word of prayer as we look at His Word to find encouragement, to be challenged, and to be prepared for the coming of our great King and Savior. O Holy Father in Heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, thank you for this great salvation you provided for us. Thank you for all of our viewers today. Thank you, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Bless our program today, Lord Jesus. Amen. So our king is speaking about the kingdom of God. And we're going to pick up in Matthew chapter 22, in this New Testament gospel, in verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard he heard about it. He was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go. Therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. Oh, this is so important. This parable speaks of the father of the groom. Of course, we know this is our father in heaven who sent his only begotten son, Messiah Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again and he invites those who are his people to the wedding in heaven, the marriage supper of the lamb. Hallelujah. And so when I came back to Messiah Jesus as an adult, I became one of these servants who invites people to the wedding. And I would go out and share the gospel in America. I'd go out and share the gospel and share the gospel on fire from the sight of Jesus. And every now and then, someone would repent and give their lives to our Lord Jesus. And, and they would be set to come to the wedding supper, the marriage supper, the wedding feast in heaven. But they were few and far between. Why? Because most of them were too busy with the cares of this life and they would make light of it. And some even would get angry at me and even threaten me, right? Just like our Lord Jesus spoke of. And so there's a warning here for those who make light of it. There's a warning here for those who are angry against the gospel of Messiah Jesus, that they will not be allowed to come and they will suffer eternal judgment in this place that our Lord warned us about. Don't go to hell. You know, there are people who get angry at other people and they say, oh, go to hell. The Lord says the opposite. He says, don't go to hell. And he's made a way by giving his own sinless life. His own sinless blood was shed to pay for our sins. Those things we've said and thought and done that are against God and against His people and creation. Right? And, and, and so this is a phenomenon. I noticed very clearly in America the hardness, the gospel hardness, the hardness of the heart towards the gospel. And I began watching on television and now and then I would see programs. One program I remember from many years ago was uh, a believer in Messiah Jesus who had gone to Africa 
and he was driving down the road and he saw an African person hitchhiking and picked them up and shared the gospel with him. And the Spirit of the Lord filled the car and that person prayed to receive the Lord. And they, they thought together, well, let's pick somebody else up. And they did. And they picked someone else up and they shared the gospel and that person received the Lord. And there was this, this softness of the heart. There was this appreciation. There was an embracing of the gospel of Messiah Jesus. And as the testimony went, before the day was out, the whole vehicle was filled with new believers in Jesus who were rejoicing that they were going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. And I thought, oh God, that one day I could go to a place where people are that open to the gospel of Messiah Jesus that they would treat the servants who, who invite people to the wedding uh, with, with great uh, joy and they would embrace them and, and, and receive the message and, and be excited about going to the marriage supper in heaven. I thought, but how could that ever happen to me? And, and you know what? I prayed and um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because he answered the prayer. And he began to send me to Africa. He began to show me the precious souls there who are lost, but they're open to the invitation. And he began to show me the millions of orphans that are in, in sub-Saharan Africa, some of whom he wanted me to go to. And, 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 and so uh, I have been doing that. I've been going with the gospel there. And we even have a ministry called Poured Out for the Nations. And, and with this ministry, my goodness, I get to go. Uh, I've been to 10 African countries. I don't have them listed in front of me. So let's see how many I can get here as I, re as I, as I um, begin to just kind of name them. Uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, the DR Congo, Burundi, Uganda, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Ghana and Nigeria. I've been able to go to these countries and still do go to some of them. And there's this open heart towards the gospel of Messiah Jesus. Truly, the Spirit of the Lord is doing things in Africa now like he was doing in America, like in the 17, 18 and early 1900s. Now, of course, we should still take the gospel in America. And, and I helped plant a congregation there called Calvary Chapel Beth Shalom in, in uh, the Houston, Texas area. And that church is still going and reaching people with the gospel and making disciples. But the thing is, Messiah Jesus says, therefore, go now. Go to the highways and, and go to the hedges and go to places where you can, where the Lord will send you to reach them. Oh, oh listen. There's places we drive into where in a four-wheel drive vehicle, you go tire to rock, rock to tire, tire to rock to get there, and, and we share the gospel there. There's times where I've shared the gospel in, in the streets. In a, in a small village in Kenya one time, there was um, a, a couple of us who were just in the streets, gathering crowds together, preaching the gospel, and we saw about 1,100 people pray to receive Jesus as Lord in a week in the streets just doing that. Uh, we've had stadium events where we preach the gospel and we've seen so many saved. We've seen children and orphans uh, pray to receive Messiah Jesus. I don't know how many thousands we've seen accept the invitation to the marriage supper. So I wanted to take this program today and share with you the marriage supper and some of the opportunities we have through this ministry poured out for the nations. Maybe you're not called to go to Africa with me, but I'll tell you something. There's a few components we can think of that work together where we partner in the gospel to invite people to the marriage supper. There's praying, there's giving, and there's going. And you can participate in one or all three of those things, whatever combination the Lord calls you to. And you can participate with me and I can participate with you as the Lord leads through our ministries in Watch Therefore Media, Blessing Israeli Believers, and Poured Out for the Nations. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to break right now and share some of the ways that you can do that. But the focus of this program today is the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. We've been invited, and oh, I pray everyone watching today will be there. will be there. And, and, and if you're not sure that you're going there, just stick around in this program today. By the end of the program, you'll be like one of those in that car that was picked up along the way in Africa, rejoicing, thankful, and excited to be forgiven of their sins and knowing they'll be spending eternity with the Lord. And one of the gateways to that eternity is this marriage feast 
in heaven. Oh, hallelujah, to the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let's watch, therefore. Let's be ready. We're going to break. When we come back, we'll continue to hear about this wonderful marriage feast. What a special season this is to reach out to precious souls with the invitation to the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven through the gospel of Messiah, Yeshua. How do we do that together? By standing on this platform, Watch Therefore Media. This program goes to 75 to 85 percent of the world. And, and with this broadcast, we challenge believers in Messiah Jesus. Don't be lukewarm. Be ready like the faithful servant who's watching for the master to come and prepared for him to do so. Also, we challenge precious unbelievers. Time is running out. Get saved today. Now, we have our ministries that operate through Watch Therefore Media and also help support uh, the program called Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations to the Jew first and then to the nations, just like Romans 1.16 says. So one of the things you can do is go to our website, watchtherefore.tv, and you can sign up for our monthly newsletter. That way you'll have prayer points. Prayer is the engine that drives this machine. You'll have prayer points. We need intercessors praying for our work to go forward. That's one way you can, you can join up. Now listen, before I go into this next component, there's praying. Before I go into the next one, giving, I want to say this. If you haven't yet believed in Jesus as Lord, we're not asking for anything from you or anyone else, frankly. It's our prayer that you wouldn't send money into the program, but that you would pray to receive Jesus as Lord and enjoy the program today. But for those watching who understand, I can't take it with me when I go, but I can send it ahead. You can lay your treasures up in heaven by giving to watch, therefore, blessing Israeli believers and poured out for the nations. The airtime for this program is very expensive. And I've learned something. As much as I love our viewers and pray for our viewers, and I'm very thankful for our viewers, my help doesn't come from our viewers. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And though this airtime is expensive, what I trust that the Lord will do is raise up from our viewers faithful partners who will want to give into this kingdom work, sending it ahead, laying their treasures up in heaven. You know, when I think of Send It Ahead, it reminds me of our Send It Ahead program as we have 364 orphans and vulnerable children who are helping on a refugee camp in Uganda with the Send It Ahead program. And, and the way we're helping there is with water, food, and teachers. These precious children uh, need cleaner drinking water. They also need water that we can plant crops so instead of eating once per day, they can eat twice per day and have teachers. That's one of the big problems with refugees is teachers uh, educating children. And we have a pastor we work with who has set up a school, but the teachers need to be paid $100 a month per teacher. So you can find all this on our website, watchtherefore.tv. You can also find out, there's information on the screen and on our website, how to give to Watch Therefore, Blessing Israeli Believers Poured Out for the Nations to help keep this program on the air and to advance the kingdom in Israel and in the nations. I'm so thankful we have this time together today. What I'd like to do now is pray. Pray that the Lord will raise up who He wants from our viewers to partner with us, but also to pray for all our viewers today that we would be faithful servants watching for the master to come. Oh, Father in heaven, bless our precious viewers today, Lord. Bless them, keep them, raise up from them the ones you want to be faithful, watch their four partners. And oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, all those who are viewing today, I pray that they would be saved and be made faithful servant disciples of your only begotten Son, O Father in heaven, our Messiah Jesus, Savior of the world. Thank you, Father, in Messiah Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for spending this time during this break in the program with me. We're getting ready to go back to the, the final uh, element or aspect teaching of the marriage supper in heaven. Oh, listen, what a day that will be when my Savior, Messiah Yeshua, 
I will see. And I pray you feel the same way. And that because of that, you want to watch therefore and you want to be ready. Enjoy the rest of the program. God bless you. Welcome back to Watch Therefore. Earlier in the program, we were looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, where our Messiah Yeshua is giving a parable about the kingdom of God. And he speaks about a great king who's giving a wedding feast for his son and has sent out his servants to invite people to the wedding. And they were too busy. They treated it with little care. And some were even violent and killed the servants. And so certainly we know that our Father in heaven is the great King and the only begotten Son of God is, is the groom. And, and, and so this is a real thing that will take place, folks. This isn't just some story. You see, the signs are all around us, which is one of the reasons I have a program called Watch Therefore. The signs are all around us that the time that Messiah Jesus called the world's worst tribulation or the time that the world will experience its worst trouble in human history will take place. We're very close to that time. And, and, and I've discussed this in many other programs and we'll continue to teach on this. And, and so we can watch, therefore, we can be ready as our Messiah Jesus comes to take us up in the clouds with the dead who are in Messiah, we who are alive remain should be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. And then what will take place according to the new covenant scriptures is the judgment seat of Christ. Where all of the works, the things that we've done in the flesh, that isn't the, those aren't things done by the Holy Spirit. Things done according to our own human ways that are against the Lord. Those things will be burned up in fi by fire in the testing that takes place at the judgment seat of Christ. And all that will come through are the precious, righteous acts of the saints. Those things we have truly done in the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so, at that point, we will be a spotless bride, a pure bride, who will be made ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus, the Messiah, who's the bridegroom, is also the Lamb of God. In that context, we can see in Revelation 19 that the wrath of God is almost finished, that has been poured out upon the earth during that great, great period of tribulation, such as the world has never seen. And it's time for Messiah Jesus to return to the earth. But first, a great ceremony and celebration takes place in heaven. And that's where we're going to begin to read Revelation 19, starting in verse 5. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right blessed are those who are called to the marriage of Supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I say to all of our viewers watching today, this event is being prepared. This will take place. And we have been invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so we can choose today. Uh, you may have heard the old saying, and I agree fully with it, that the Lord could have chosen to make or create robots, but he didn't. From Adam and Eve onward, we've seen that 
men and women have been created with the, the ability to make a choice. And, and we can choose to be at this marriage supper. We can choose to embrace the invitation. We can choose to be those servants who go out and invite others. And I choose both. I choose to be at this marriage ceremony in heaven. I have been invited. I've been called. The Lord has sent servants to me to give the invitation. I'm giving that invitation to you. And, and, and if you've already believed in Messiah Jesus, you're to go out with that, with that charge as well to invite people in to the marriage ceremony, that marriage supper in heaven. And how do we do that? And what is the message? What is the invitation? It's this. Repent. In your heart and mind, understand that, that sin is a killer. Uh, our thoughts, words, and deeds that are against God's ways are sins. And we are called to repent. We are commanded. The Bible says God has commanded all men everywhere to repent, to change our mind about our sins, which will then, as we turn to Messiah Jesus, trusting that he died on the cross for our sins, was buried on the third day, hallelujah, he rose again, as we put our faith in him to forgive us of our sins, in repentance, turning in our heart and mind away from our sins, that will bear fruit of repentance, meaning our our repentance that is in our heart and mind will come out into our lives. We'll turn away from our sins. I was going out with the gospel, knocking on doors at one point in my, my ministry in Texas. And uh, knocked on the door of a young man and young lady who were living together. And started sharing these things with them. And one of them said, well, okay, so what does this mean to repent? I said, what this means is one of you has to move out. Or you have to get married. Right? You see, there's, there's repentance in our heart and mind, but it will always bear fruit of repentance. Are you saying that I have to get my whole life straightened out before I can give my life to Jesus? Absolutely not. No. Repentance begins in the heart and the mind. And then as we call out upon the name of the Lord to be saved and, and receive Him as Savior, there will be fruit of repentance as we will begin to change our lives because of the inward witness of righteousness and holiness that is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yes? And what is that hope of glory? That one day we will be in glorified bodies. He will come for us in the clouds. Our, our bodies that we have now will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 with regard to the rapture. Well, the rapture isn't even in the Bible anywhere. Well, neither is the word the Trinity, but you see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Right? And so the rapture is a term given from the Latin translation of the two words that are in English, caught up. Caught up. The, word, the Bible was originally written in Greek in the New Testament, and those words that are translated in English, caught up, in Latin are translated in a way that sounds very similar to the English word rapture. Okay? So, if you want to say caught up and that makes you feel better, praise God. <laughs> and, and so, when we will be caught up and meet the Lord in the air, we will be glorified. So, uh, Messiah in us gives us this hope of that time when we're caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and, and, that, and, and our bodies are glorified. Yes? And so the invitation is for you today and for me. I've accepted that invitation. Have you? I've received Jesus as my Lord. Have you? And what you can do today, if you're not sure, well, I go to church. Well, that's great. It's important to go to church. Well, I, I give money to the church. Hey, listen, it costs money to run a church. That's great that you do that. Oh, I, I have the Bible. Hey, it's important to have a Bible. The Word of God has changed my life. But none of those things will put you at that table of the marriage ceremony in heaven. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Messiah Jesus, the Lamb. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. You must put your faith, your hope, your trust in Him alone to save you, to forgive you, to heal you. That, that is what makes our faith distinct from all the world's religions. Getting baptized, bar mitzvahed, confirmed, none of those things will put you at that table 
and heaven at that marriage supper. But putting your faith in this Messiah Jesus, nobody can take your seat then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, please, pray with me. Pray to receive Jesus, Lord. Cry, cry out to him, oh, Jesus, Lord, I've sinned against you. Please save me. I believe you have the power to forgive sins. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried on the third day, rose again. Here I am in need of forgiveness. Save me, forgive me, and help me to live a life that demonstrates I'm looking for you and getting ready for your coming. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, for those who have prayed that prayer today, seal it, please. Protect them and bless them and help them now grow in your grace and mercy. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, for all those viewing today, I pray blessings, grace, favor, and your loving kindness upon them. And that you would now empower us to go out and invite people to this special ceremony in this special feast, O oh, great King, because your only begotten Son is so worthy. Thank you, Father, in Messiah Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you've enjoyed the program today. But more than that, I pray that you've been equipped by this program today. And if you've just received Jesus as Lord, please contact us at the contact information in the program. Get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that believes that King Jesus is coming anytime. Until we get together next time, remember to watch Therefore and be ready. Thank you for joining us for our program today. Our program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveschwartz 62 at yahoo.com. That's D-O-V-S-C-H-W-A-R-Z. 62 at yahoo.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website, watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website, watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is an amazing tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. Feel free to also find us there at watchtherefore.tv. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch therefore and be ready.